All right, guys, welcome back to the Cockadoodle Crew, and the girls are here. What are we doing here, girls? We're going to take out our chicks in our Q GQF. We're taking the chicks out of the GQF incubator, that's right. Oh, my goodness. Ready? Lindsay, will you come in here? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay, go fast. Good chick. Daddy, 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 put out your hands, Daddy, 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 Alright, what is it? An uh, incubator. Incubator? Chicken people know what that says, don't they? They know it's a GQF Sportsman 1502 cabinet style incubator. Well, hang on, we got stuff to show you here on the Cockadoodle Crew channel where you. Watch out, we do one Cockadoodle Crew. We got some boxes here today we're pretty excited about. This is a GQF Sportsman 1502 incubator and some accessories. And so we are looking forward to ramping up our chicken program this year. Okay, so watch along guys as we start unboxing these pieces, taking a look at them. Uh, we're going to probably get some tools out and try to get it assembled and check it out. Right. Right. And I got helpers, so we're going to use the helpers today. So we got the egg holders. Alright, this appears to be our egg holders. And I must say that I wasn't 100% sure which hey. ones to buy. But um, it looks pretty good from here. We'll go grab an egg and see if they see if they fit. When I say I'm not sure I got the right ones, um, there are several options. It does look like it's holding it. But it's not very deep in there. I don't know. We're just learning as we go, as you can see. I'm sure they sent me what I ordered. And I did try to call the company, and I kept getting a voicemail. I couldn't get through to, um, it seemed like every time I called, even if it was during what they said business hours was, I got, it, it didn't pick up. All right, well, of course, it's always something, so. We'll see if the, maybe these will work and maybe there's no problem. So we went ahead and bought the clear acrylic door option. And um, I chose to do that because I've got the kids involved. I thought it'd be way easier to see inside the incubator. And when we're hatching out, it'd be a lot more fun to watch through the big clear door. I just thought it'd make the whole experience more fun for the kids and to keep them involved. So that's why I went with the clear acrylic door. Okay, you want to do it? Ooh. Okay, these are the legs that came with the incubator. And I did not choose to buy the ones with wheels, but I wanted wheels. Set of wheels here at the home store. And they were having a discount day, so... I think I was into them for like 15 bucks, and I got two locking and two um, two that don't have locks. So I'm just going to put them. I'm just going to put these on and save myself 30 bucks or so. Okay, okay, get something done here now. We're trying to get something done. Can we go back to work now? No. What? So we'll see. This may be not recommended to do, but this is pretty much what it looked like on their website, and the wheels look very similar. So I'm going to try it, and then we'll know whether you should do that or not. All right, so we didn't show you all the details of what we just did, but the little plates that came for the bottom legs with it, we went ahead and popped a couple of uh, holes in this metal framework, 
and um, screwed those plates on with the wheels that I added to it so seems like it's gonna work now and uh, really not that big of a deal but I usually try to make things a little harder than they need to be so anyway that's typical anyway we've got the wheels on and um, we saved a little bit of money so we're gonna switch the door out here at some point but maybe we'll plug it in and see if it makes some noise before we get too far with switching the door out and all that okay. what do you think you want to do that No. what I had to search around it looks like a nine millimeter socket fits these little nuts Okay, so we had to take off all the nuts and now the old, the original door come off and this door did have a little bit of squish damage on this corner, I don't think it would have affected anything, but this is a big heavy item that they ship and this is a phone core board panel, so you know, I wouldn't be totally shocked if that happened if you ordered it too, it's not going to matter I don't think, but but anyway, we got the acrylic door. <laughs> and we're gonna need to peel off. Do you want to peel that off? Okay. Okay, so I got a couple of them just tightened on there gently. You get on this video. It's maybe not the very best location, it's by some windows, it's by a heat vent, but uh, for now it's probably one of our better options. So anyway there's one problem with this machine that is not going to work for us and we need to fix it what is it joella um it's beeping it's just beeping isn't it it beeps and beeps okay so i didn't know this somehow i missed it in the other youtube videos that i watched before we bought it but the machine beeps when it's going to do its egg turning um routine so anyway, I will show you now what the beep sounds like because I can make it beep, but it's going to beep every couple hours when it does that egg turning motion and nobody likes hearing that. So I guess the only way to fix it is to disable the speaker altogether, which I don't really like because I would like to hear the alarms when, the, um, when, when it would also give you a temperature alert or a humidity alert. I wish you could only disable it during the mo the motion time and and have the speaker you know functioning for those other alarms it's too bad that that's not the way it's set up but uh, apparently that is the way it is so that's what we're going to do and uh, we'll show you that part here right now okay so you can see the trays are turning and it was beeping when she held down the manual button so it basically beeps whenever that turning action is happening whether you're making it do it manually or it does it automatically it beeps under both scenarios so from what i've understood you have to take these um these top corner braces off on both sides so that's 20 screws and i got the drill still here from when we installed it so it shouldn't take very long but I really wanted to triple check before I did that that there wasn't a better way and I'm not seeming to see one and that's a disappointment because I would like to hear the alarms during the other scenarios. So we're going to be taking these all the way off and girls with little hands and a bowl. Oh, is your bowl empty? Can you put the screws in it? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. She's done eating. Here, put the screws in the bowl please. Okay, I'll pull you in close so you can see the uh, see the speaker itself. Okay, so we're looking at the inside of the incubator here, the um, the inner workings of it, and as far as I understand, this is the speaker. It's round. It's got a red wire and a black wire, and it's just got this little plug that that uh, brings the signal to it. 
So we're gonna unplug that, and um, that's supposedly all you have to do. And of course, you have no more, no more beeping of any kind. So there it is. It's unplugged. I guess we'll just leave it in there. Um, can we still turn it on? And now we can turn it on and push the M button and see if it works and if it doesn't make a sound. Okay, we can see the drive motor right here is moving and it's making no noises at all. All right guys, well we are going to be letting this thing warm up and we're gonna go drive around the country and pick up some eggs from some friends. All right, well stay tuned to the Cockadoodle Crew where you watch how we do. On the Cockadoodle Crew and describe. Describe, you heard Joella. Describe and share and like. With your friends. With your friends. Get your overalls on. We're going to get eggs and then we're going to go get eggs. Hey. We're going to get our eggs and we're going to start driving around and picking up some eggs from some friends. Overalls, activate. All right, guys, here we've got uh, eggs that I got from our friends Neil and Eileen, who you guys have seen on the channel before. These four dozen, minus one, that I got from them are from an olive agar rooster and a couple of uh, different hens that they have. So these are gonna be our higher end chicks that we're gonna try to raise up. And, um, and so these are special eggs. I'm going to go ahead and wash them and do a hydrogen peroxide spray on them, which I have never done either of those things before uh, trying to incubate before. But I heard that uh, on YouTube that it might be something to try. All right, we got these eggs loaded up in the trays and uh, they are clean gently and my wife had this food grade hydrogen peroxide and so we're gonna put it in the spray bottle and give them a light mist. This is just some recommendations I saw on a few YouTube videos so hopefully it's not ruining my batch of eggs. Alright guys, so here's an update on our incubated eggs that we're working on in our new GQF incubator. We have three rows of eggs as you can see now. So the top row has 96 eggs, a full two tray, uh, eight dozen set up on the, on the top tray and they are now at day 18. It's pretty early for day 18. I didn't get them in until about 10 o'clock at night when I first put them in. So um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and put them in the hatching basket which I have modified and uh, because I want to keep separate the, the uh, two different trays of chicks that I'm going to hatch so I made modification to the tray and here we go we're going to move the eggs on down So a couple things about the incubator that I thought I would update you on now that we've had it for three weeks or a little longer uh, since we set it up and we filled it with eggs. Um, one of my favorite things so far about this is that the humidity and the temperature stays super consistent in this thing. So even after opening the door as I did, you saw, you know, to switch things out, it really doesn't go really low in temperature. It went down to about 94 degrees. I put the door back on and I think it'll only take a few minutes to heat back up. With the addition of the accessory water filling bucket, you don't have to open the door to um, keep the, the water level in, you know, constant in there. And so basically you're just getting um, a, a very consistent uh, you know, incubation period where you're not opening the door and uh, things get to just sit and stay in in perfect conditions basically so that's one of the things i really like so far about the the unit and um you notice on the hatching basket i made a divider going a long way and that's because the turning uh trays inside the incubator 
dip down into the into the hatching basket on their lowest you know as, as they dip all the way down either side and so you can't put a crossways divider in there uh, it would hit the tray that's trying to dip down into the basket so uh, we'll see how that works out it looks like my divider ate up a little bit of space and since I had a very full um, you know set of set of eggs they're kind of tight in there one side they're a little bit stacked that's probably not the best I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and watch and see what happens so this is our first try we're just giving this a shot and obviously as you can see we're kind of going for it on the amount of eggs that we've uh, packed into this thing but it's early in the spring and to me time is super important here because the earlier we get started the earlier the the chickens will be laying eggs okay what are you seeing tell me what you're seeing the chick is halfway out okay well, our first chick of the first chick that ever got hatched in our so he's oh there's a little head. There's our first chick ever hatched. Our DQF incubator. four by morning huh mm -hmm. good there's some real fresh ones that just popped out and uh, but as you can see these ones on the right there they were the first to hatch the most hatching is the cross mix birds that that we got from actually three different locations but they're all just barnyard crosses laying breeds Hi. Oh, there she is. We're going to take out our chicks in our GQF. We're taking the chicks out of the GQF incubator, that's right. Now, I know that it's not the, always the best idea to open the incubator until everything's hatched, but we're really packed in there. It's really crammed and crowded, and we haven't had a chance to uh, rotate the other eggs. And there's a whole bunch of birds that have hatched, so we are going to give this a shot. Ready to open? Ready to open? Is are you ready to open? I have started one. Okay, there's the top one. Yep. The middle one. There's the middle one. I get the last one. Okay, okay. that goes Okay, watch out. You sit over here, Lizzie. I'm gonna pull the whole box out. Okay. All right. Can we see that? Oh my goodness. Lindsay, will you come in here? Yes. Oh, there's some that are. Half out. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go. We'll watch them. Oh, look at that. I know, we're going to watch them. Do you see them? Oh, my goodness. Hey, we're just looking, okay? Oh, they're so cute. No touching, Keith. She's with the pet. Just kind of look. You can pet a little bit. You're doing great. Keep going. Here's some of them. The wet ones, are you going to leave in? Yeah, we're going to leave them in. And once they're, they're half out of the show. Yeah, the olive eggers were, were the later hatchers. Just broken eggs out that we can. Oops, easy, breezy. There you go. This little pet. Yes, these ones are Yes, yeah, oh. Okay, make sure they stay in the right spots. We will. Oh, careful, Keeks. Bird. Bird? 
Halfway out. Okay, let's go check it out. <laughs> 